All right, guys. Um, folks, I have two gentlemen here who are going to introduce themselves uh, in a little second, but um, we are going to be doing a fitness expo now in the middle of November, and I wanted to get chatting with these guys just to kind of get a little bit of their background, uh, where they started, and, and how they came about to have this idea of starting a fitness expo. So, um, Jason, you came on the call first, so I'll let you start if that's okay. Because thank, <laughs> thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs> introduce yourself and kind of give a little bit of a background um, on your health and fitness industry and your journey so far. Uh, so, basically, so I do, I'm starting to do the, the sports mindset, so I guess it's kind of like a sports psychology, but it's, it's using um, hypnosis and NLP, so... I'm currently doing NLP now at the minute as well. So for me, it was, I trained as a clinical hypnotherapist back in 2017. And I always had an interest in kind of helping people. But I also wanted to get more into the sports side with the athletes, like and helping them achieve their goals. So for me, for the expo, I was kind of looking at, I guess, looking at seminars and stuff. And that. So, so I kind of approached a few places around Donegal to see if there was like a platform where I could go and do a talk on on this and kind of self-promote myself. And so it was funny because I was just chatting to Peter one Sunday about this and uh, he was saying that he would always love to have done something like this as well. So before we even knew it, the hotel was booked and we had people on board. So it had kind of just escalated before we had even thought about it really. Like, And it just, yes. it just taken off from that time. And when when was that first initial conversation? Was that two years ago? Was it like a year ago or maybe six weeks ago? Was oh, it? That, that was that was probably back in what do we know? October, maybe July this year, June or oh. July. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> it did. It did. From a quick com, I remember I was just actually on my way to Bondorn and was chatting to Peter on the phone about it. Like, and I think maybe two days later the, the hotel was booked and it just took off from there. Right? No messing about, guys. That's probably the best way. Just get in and, and just take the reaction. Yes. <laughs> um, Peter, introduce yourself, yes. please, and give us a little bit of your background. Cheers. Uh, Jimmy, uh, basically, in, uh, in the fitness industry now, best part of 12 years, um, kind of found the fitness uh, side of things basically from football. You know, got a, developed an interest in the gym. And it kind of got going f from there for me, really. Just uh, life, lifeguarding, um, gym instruction. I kept pursuing the qualifications then. And had a stint in America then for a couple of years uh, with the soccer scholarship. And uh, learned a lot out there regards PT and the rest of it. And then came back home and then tried to get things going here for myself. Um, it kind of brought me up to kind of current times then. Uh, Working in Letter Kenny now with, out of Rush Fitness there, um, yes. PT and out of there, you know. So find myself doing a bit more strength and conditioning. Yeah. Nice man. Um, when what part of America and stuff were you in? I was in Chicago for two years. There I was with the university there, um, University of Robert Morris, and then from there I went out to San Francisco for a year. Then working, uh, doing personal training. Great experience, like you know. Very hey, good man. Um, and since how long have you been back now in Letter Kenny? How long have you been with uh, back back now? Best part of t 10 years now, we're nearly going on for a, a flu in, really. Um, but uh, I've been I'm working in a leisure in the hotel and then two years now up at Rush Fitness, so having, having a great time there so far, you know, it's going well. Excellent, Excellent buddy. Um, that's that's great. So, how do you what's the connection between? Yourself, Peter, and, and Jason, how did you come to meet each other? And you didn't meet him out in America, I, did you? No, uh, <laughs> I know Jason from back home. Obviously, I'm a man, and uh, I, know, I know Jason well through just a uh, like different uh, circle of friends and, and that there, you know? Yeah. Um, but uh, I know Jason this long time and always kept in good contact and all the rest and kind of... I was competing there a lot in jiu-jitsu and I would have got the help from Jason with, uh, you know, his uh, sports psychology uh, that he works in. And definitely found it, it helped a lot. So, um, 
we kept in touch a lot more there, even in, in the past year, even just in regards to that, which uh, which was great, you know, and uh, it helped me get some good results and uh, jiu-jitsu and stuff as well, you know. What uh, and what way did you find his his methods or his mindset sort of work for you? Did he help? Uh, yeah, just sort of in your own words, how how did it sort of help you? Uh, just give you a better outlook for um, when you compete, you know, uh, just uh, familiarize you with uh, the way you set yourself up for the day, you know, so just uh, in a long way around, it kind of puts you at ease where you're familiar with things and nothing's really um, getting you too worked up or excited, just kind of calm where you can keep your thinking going, where you don't find yourself in too many uh minds on the day can you kind of keep things simple and just approach it from there it's very easy to get caught up with things and let the head wander which ultimately kind of beats people on the day you know with their with their chosen sport basically to be anything you know yeah um and, and like how much uh, probably the two of you there i uh, could probably answer this but how much is it down to kind of visualize visualization of yourself in that position and how much of it is like self-talk you know is there is there more than one area that you need to work on whenever you are in that position and trying to help your mindset like what works best yeah. for you and, and what sort of areas are you sort of focusing on whenever you're Jay, I'll let you take this, bud. Um, I, I guess it is a combination of everything, really. Uh, it's just being aware of what you're thinking. So what you think is what you're going to be feeling too on the day. Like, So if you can think that your mind's like a thinker and a provider. So if you're going to be thinking to yourself that you're going to go into a fight with the thought of losing it, then your body is going to react that way. So you're going to end up feeling anxious and nervous. and before you even think of, before you even get into it, you've already thought to yourself that you've lost that fight. So that's the perception that you're going in. You're going in already losing that fight. So if we can get you to look at it from another perspective, so I guess with the visualization and the self-talk, it's, it's telling yourself that you're going to win it, seeing yourself that you're going to win it, and then just kind of taking you through the motions, um, situations maybe that you might find yourself where you got into before, maybe it might have been a struggle. Mm. So seeing it as maybe getting into a position where before it could, you might have been uh, given up at this point, but allowing your mind then to see maybe different scenarios that you can reverse it, that you can get out of it and maybe get the win from that. So it's just flipping it around. And again, the self-talk then too as well. Like we all do it. We all tell ourselves that we're not good enough, you know, uh, when we are so mm -hmm. it's just becoming aware of what you're saying yourself and yeah. changing it around so i guess from peter's point of view as well like i know as he said earlier on it it is your mind like you kind of beat yourself in your mind so it's just getting yourself to kind of stay focused giving yourself that good self-talk and then just using some little anchor techniques too just to kind of help you remain calm and stay focused as well before and during the fights or golf or soccer or whatever your event or game may be at the time. Very good. Um, how long have you been using these techniques, uh, Peter? Uh, working with Jason over a year now, just so uh, Jason's um, been, been kind of working with myself over a year. So i uh, got a couple of good results, you know, competitions, and I definitely took a lot from it. So. Definitely, within the past years, it's kind of where it's kind of become good for me, you know, yes. using it, yeah. Have you been doing BJJ a lot longer than a year, and you've just sort of started using these techniques this last year? How long have you been yeah. doing? I've, I've been doing Jiu-Jitsu now going on five years. I would have done a bit of Judo before that. Um, so I think there was just uh, 2013 that I've got into uh, just martial arts in general. Right. Um, but so time's flew in, loved it now. It's it's great, uh, two great sports. But uh, in regards to sports psychology things, side of things, it'd be basically just over the last year. But you know, I think what it helps is kind of keeping you consistent in what you're doing. It gives you kind of like a just a, a path to follow. Yeah. Um, but um, no, we're very lucky there. We have uh, a great, great coach there and, and a team, Torres and Derry. 
with Martin McLaughlin, you know, yeah. and it really is, is like arguably one of the best, if not the best, clubs in the country, like, you know, in yeah, regards to Jiu Jitsu and MMA. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I know Martin, he's a very humble guy, too, so he is. He's um, yeah. lovely mannerism about him um, whenever you get to speak to him. So it'll be interesting to t- talk to him on the day, and he'll be also doing Brilliant. a dem- demonstration. You know, uh, will, will you be yeah, helping definitely. out with that, will you? Uh, I don't think so. I'm just recovering from a, a knee injury at the minute, so um, I don't think I'll have the green light in that. But uh, I think Marty and Aaron Devlin on the day, I think they'll, they'll definitely do it justice. They have a, a serious skill set now. Um, yes. they're, they're a couple of great martial arts. Um, Aaron, he would do a bit of MMA as well. Um, but uh, Aaron's a high level brown belt, and Marty's, I think, the first black belt in Derry, as far as I know. Um, and he's. he's Really, really well thought of and he's at two circles as well, you know. I think he's ha- he actually went to Brazil to get qualified in that, didn't he? Uh, he visited Brazil, yeah, but he's training a long time there with his with the, the head coach of Team Torres there and Yuri, uh, Sebastian Torres. And they've, they've been doing great work, like, you know, and they've, they've training, like, initially as it started from very humble beginnings and then it's it's really in recent years you've got an a amazing... Uh, club and facility there uh, at Pennyburn, you know? Yes, yes. No, that's uh, uh, very much so. Um, no, that'll be really interesting on the day. So, well, I want to really talk about more about November 10th, the, the day of the expo, and kind of get uh, more of a rundown of what, for people, what they can I expect. Um, so, um, is there going to be stalls for people to kind of go round? And then, with regards to the actual talking um, and meeting the actual people like your Marty, you know, what's what sort of the structure for the day, and what do you, what will people expect? Yeah. Um, so on the day, we'll have things everything ranging from nutrition, uh, well-being, uh, powerlifting. We've got. Uh, uh, Olympic lifting even slightly different um, and uh, all things health and fitness basically orientated um, on the day. Um, hopefully it, it caters for people all around the northwest so we have people from from Derry right the way down to Donegal Town um, and arguably we could get a couple more um, in the next while even in the build up to it. We have a couple of spaces still available but yes. um, it, it's really just a, creating a platform for everyone to advertise and, and market and show what they're about. Um, that happens to be in the health and fitness industry. So, I w- like, as, say for the average person just walking in, they can they can see everything and anything from yoga to martial arts to powerlifting. So it's just a a, a great kind of all round um, setup for for the health and fitness industry. You know. It is like, uh, mm. and especially here in, in in Northern Ireland or Ireland in general, I think, like even MMA is such a such so new to Ireland and, yeah. and, and that, and, and it's a lot of people probably aren't aware of like the rules and regulations and how it's actually as, as safe as what it is. You know, people may have yeah. a perception that it's maybe a thug sport. I talk to boxers. Uh. And they think they don't like MMA because it's, it's it's not really uh, uh, because of the discipline that maybe they don't understand it that way. But do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's, I think uh, by by getting into a martial arts club, uh, you know, it, it helps kind of people understand it. And I think it's even clubs have done that where they've got people with uh, they had a certain perception of MMA or you know the martial arts in general that. Uh, they, they didn't uh, realize the amount of discipline and the amount of structure to it. Yes. Um, so it definitely helped. I think it helps change people's perceptions, you know. Um, and but the more more people look into it, I think the more people will find that, you know, um, that that is great. It's, it's very disciplined. You have to be very uh, calculated a lot of the time, you know, it's, and uh, trying to update the. The, the hardware basically without damaging the software as John Cavanagh yeah. says well a lot a lot of boys I know a young guy who would love close to me um, he would do boxing and MMA now because he does that 
his mindset's different. He wouldn't be actually going out looking for a fight at the weekend, or you know, he no. doesn't really prove anything Surely. in that sense. Exactly. So yeah. uh, people, people think you if you're doing jiu-jitsu, you're you're doing MMA or kickboxing, K1, whatever it is. Um, that they're maybe going out at the weekend and looking for a fight, but it's it's not like that at all. I think their mindset, like, um, you know, Jason, their mindset would change that they don't need to prove anything then, you know, whenever mm-hmm. they're in that environment. But um, it's really interesting because there's such a variety there at the expo. Um, is there anyone specifically that you're really excited to listen to, to hear, to watch? Um, uh, yeah, on the day? I'm, I'm really looking forward to uh, Owen Murphy on the day there. Um, coming up from Sika Strength. Um, Owen and Dara, they do, do a great podcast like yourself. And, uh, they're coming up from uh, down the country and they're, they're really going to uh, show like Olympic lifting and strength and conditioning at a high level. Um, I think a lot of times people say like a, a picture paints a thousand words, but it definitely will be the, the case with these guys when you see Olympic lifting. That's very impressive to see in, in person. And I think it'll be a, a great spectacle for people coming on the day you know brilliant um jason is anyone you you're sort of excited to see and learn more about uh i'm a little bit well just everything in general like i mean the whole the whole concept of the thing too as well is just because it is for the general public and we're like it's not just mma or powerlifting like we we want to bring together everything that is available out there because i don't think a lot of people have actually realized what the, the Northwest has to offer, like from the likes of sailing clubs, kayaking, abseiling. There's all these different aspects that's I'm maybe not, like I wasn't even aware of until we started getting into this. Yeah. So even just, we have a lady there that's got, she's a, a wellness coach. She'll be doing a talk, Sharon Doherty. So even just for the general public, just to come, just to come in and be aware of maybe the nutrition and the wellness side, and just the whole aspect and just bringing everything together so that people can kind of leave them with a, a better knowledge or a better understanding of their own personal well-being yes. and what's yes. available out there and what they might want to get into as well. So for me, I think it's all it's just an all-rounder, just think. Brilliant, man. Oh, it's a really good idea. Um, you don't know of any other expos that are close by or is this the first one in Donegal or what's... Well, this is the first I'm aware of anyhow, so yep. um, anybody that we've kind of approached or talked about, just think it's like the concept, is a, it's a great concept, so hopefully people will come and they'll benefit from it, and maybe we can grow year on year on this. Good, um, well, yep. hopefully, hopefully we will be able to do so, um, I think it's a great idea, and as, a, as I say, it's just promoting the whole health and well-being and letting people know what's out there. Um, have you used anything to add that you just want to say to people out there or about the expo or? Uh, definitely like from young, young people right up to adults that might be looking to get into a certain aspect of, or even curious about a certain aspect of uh, training um, and, and fitness, even, even things that they might want to change, possibly get into a, a better run with things with their diet. Uh, any any kind of questions that they might have in their head, I think they'll definitely help find find answers for it at the the expo. So coming in on the day, like um, I, th- I think hopefully people will walk out with something that they they didn't really have going into it. Basically, um, some type of game plan they could go out of with their kind of the questions that they had. Yes. Um, I, I definitely think their their eyes will be open to a few things that they they may not have seen before, be it Olympic lifting or be it martial arts. Um, so hopefully someone that goes in, especially younger people that might yeah. be looking for a, a path in the, the the fitness industry or seeking a career in it, that they might be able to go. You know what? I seen that there one time when I was younger, and it really helped me uh, and motivate me in in that path. The and fitness, you know, or it might be something as simple as that there on the day that can can really spark an interest in something, you know. So, I, that'd be that'd be what I'd be hopeful for, you know. Awesome, awesome, buddy. Um, any final words yourself, um, Jason, on it or? Uh, uh, it's just pretty much what Peter said. Like, it's you're never too young or you're never too old to try something new. Yeah. So again, it's just coming in. You may get something from it. You may not. 
unless you come, you're not going to know. So yes, good stuff. <laughs> Excellent. Um, can you just finally uh, let the people know where they can find your own personal uh, social media and the one for the expo? Yes, do you want to go uh, first? So, all right, so you can get me on JC Sports Performance uh, on Facebook and Instagram. And then if you want to just punch into the search bar in Facebook, Wild Atlantic Way Health and Fitness Expo, you'll get the, the link straight away to the events page. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And the same on Instagram as well. And Peter, where can people find you? Yeah, you can get me on Facebook there, uh, Peter Gallagher PT, uh, Strength and Condition. And then uh, Instagram, uh, Peter Gallagher uh, PT11. Um, so hopefully either of those will find me and then also you can reach me through the Wild Atlantic Way Health Fitness uh, Expo page on Instagram. Fantastic. Excellent, man. Um, looking forward to it and I'll see you bright and early on the 10th of November. <laughs> Brilliant, Jimmy. Excellent. Thanks a million. Looking forward to it, hey. Cheers, buddy. Right. Well, have the coffee ready. Yeah, bro. <laughs> Good stuff.